Dr. Gray. I'm going to be talking about the titration experiment that you're going to be doing for experiment number five. Now, first of all, look, I'm in proper dress attire. If you can't see me all the way, I've got jeans on, those cover my ankles. I've got a, a nice, I don't know, hooded sweatshirt that I bought at Academy that keeps me protected. Most importantly, I got goggles on. Second, I want to talk to you about your bin. This week in your bin, you're going to have the following items. You will have a 150 milliliter glass beaker. You will have a plastic bottle. You will have a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, and finally, a 400 milliliter plastic beaker. There is one other piece of glassware that you will be using this week, and in order to use that piece of glassware, you need to go to the soccer and check it out. And rent it. So what you will need to do is go to page number 63 in your lab manual, and that will have a form that you're going to fill out, sign, get your TA to sign, or get your IA, your instructional assistant, to write their names and initial. You'll have to fill that out completely. The piece of glassware that you will collect at the stock room is this right here. This is known as a burette. We are going to be putting a base solution, or a solution of sodium hydroxide, into this base burette. Now there are a couple of things that you need to be familiar with for using this beer. First of all, right here, at the top of this burette, you see it read zero milliliters. At the bottom of this burette, you'll see it reads 50 milliliters. Now, what that means is if you fill this burette all the way to the top, you have more than 50 milliliters, less than 50 milliliters, or exactly 50 milliliters. Well, if you fill it up all the way to the top of this burette, well, here's the zero marker, here's the 50. From here to here is 50 milliliters. If you go beyond that, you're going to be adding more than 50 milliliters to this burette. So be careful whenever you're adding your solution to this. How do you add solutions to this uh, burette? Well, you're going to clamp the burette into this clamp right here. You're going to get a funnel, put it at the top of that burette. You will get your base solution, the base that we're going to be working with. Your IA will transfer this to a smaller bottle, but the base that we're going to be working with is sodium hydroxide with a concentration of 0.75 molar. So that means 0.75 moles of sodium hydroxide are present in one liter. We will not be using one liter, instead we will be using about 50 so I'm going to add my solution in here, and then I'm going to transfer it to my funnel. Before I transfer it to my funnel, I want to make sure that my valve on my burette is closed. And what that means is that it is perpendicular to the burette and parallel to the ground. I'll adjust this, or I'll put my, my burette back in. It is closed. I'm going to, first of all, add about 5 milliliters of the base, because what I want to do is basically equilibrate my burette for use with this solution. I'm going to get a small amount of paraffin and put that on the top. So now I've got this nice paraffin that's protecting my fingers. There are also gloves around the lab, so you're welcome to get gloves. And I'm just going to invert this a couple of time, times because what I want is this base solution, the sodium hydroxide, to coat the inside of my burette. Once I've done that, I can discard my paraffin. I can put my burette back into the stand. And then with my 400 milliliter uh, plastic beaker, I can collect the solution that flows out. That's my waste container. So now that I've let all of that flow out, it's still going. It's still going. And C. I'm, to clo I'm going to close the valve on my burette, and I'm going to add my sodium hydroxide. Add it slowly because if you pour it all in, it will overflow in the funnel. I'm going to continue adding, adding, adding my solution. 
Now the great thing about using a burette is what you can do with it is you can use exact volumes, but you don't have to fill it all the way to the top. Now if we look right here, you'll see that my solution level is at approximately, where is it? It's right here, and I would call that 15.3 milliliters. So you are going to record your initial volume at 15.3 milliliters. I'm going to remove my funnel, I'm going to rinse it out with some deionized water. And I'm basically done with that. Now, I want to get a pair of gloves because anytime I'm working with an acid, or a base for that matter, you always want to keep protecting yourself. So I'm wearing these gloves, these nitrile gloves, I'm going to transfer, I'm doing two trials, so what I'm going to do is get my acid, this unknown acid, I will tell you that it is sodium, or it is hydrochloric acid, so it is HCl. The concentration of this, however, I'm not going to tell you, that is for you to figure out. What I'm going to do is transfer 50 milliliters into my graduated cylinder. Again, your IA is going to be preparing or transferring from this vessel into a smaller uh, bottle for your beaker for you to transfer. I'm going to put 50 milliliters of this into my 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Watch it carefully. right here. Phenyl phalene indicator. You might look at that word and think there is no way on earth that says phenyl phalene because it's got a lot of pHs and there's even a pH th in there. It just seems like a crazy word. But I promise you this is phenyl phalene. I'm going to get two to three drops of this solution. Notice this is a clear solution. I'm going to add it directly to my 125 mil Erlenmeyer flask. One, two, three. I think I actually got four. But at any rate, what you'll notice is the color of my solution did not change. So what's in here? We have a strong acid, HCl, and we have our pH indicator. That pH indicator, phenolphthalein, will change color whenever we are working with a neutral solution. So I'm going to readjust the camera here. So right now I have my solution, my acid solution in my Erlenmeyer flask, I have my base solution in my burette, and I have a small amount of phenolphthalein in the acid solution as well. So that's my indicator solution. What I'm going to be watching for is as I add my base, and as I get closer and closer to neutral pH, what I'm going to see is a color change. And it's going to be fairly subtle and faint, but you want to keep a close watch while constantly swirling. Swirl, swirl, swirl. Notice how you can adjust the flow rate of your burette so that it goes from a fast stream to a drop by drop. When you get closer to your equivalence point, you want to adjust to that uh, drop by drop. I'm continuing to add, and as you can see, this is kind of meticulous. You have to be patient and it will happen very rapidly. That color change will take place super quick. It's changing, it's getting close. You might think that nothing's happening, but we are slowly but surely, surely neutralizing this acid with sodium hydroxide. Notice, there we go. There's a very subtle color change. If you look there, it's no longer clear. It is a slightly 
pinkish magenta pigment, that is what you are aiming for. The more faint that you can get your solution, but still it has changed, the better. After you've done this, you're going to look at your burette right here, and you're going to read the final volume. So you have your initial volume of sodium hydroxide and your final volume of sodium hydroxide. And once you see that, you know the total amount of base that was required for the neutralization of this HCl. When you have the volume of the base, you already know the volume of the HCl that was added. You can use that ultimately to deduce what is the concentration of that HCl solution. Well, that's about all there is to this lab. Um, you have to do two trials. You only have to use about one to two drops of the phenolphthalein. I wish you the best of luck and thanks for watching.